Hey everyone, it's Jeremy Siner, and today we're gonna make a suede leather material in Substance Designer. I've noticed that this particular material is quite hard to find online. There's quite a few suede materials out there that you can download, but it's quite tricky to get right. So I figured if it's so hard to find, why not make it ourselves and make it tweakable so that we can get exactly what we want. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's start off by creating a new graph. I'm gonna file new substance. I'm gonna choose the PBR metallic roughness template and let's call this suede tutorial. I'm gonna keep the size mode to relative to parent and do a 4K graph with 16 bits per channel as the format and hit okay. Great, so the first thing I like to do is make a final blend node that just hooks up all of our outputs to all of the height information that we're making. So I'm gonna hit spacebar and bring in a blend node and I'm gonna hook this up to the normal conversion node here that goes to our normal output. And I'm gonna remove these two nodes that are connected to the ambient occlusion output and the height output. So I'm gonna remove these by selecting and hitting delete. And then I'm gonna bring in an ambient occlusion node, spacebar ambient occlusion, and connect that up. That's gonna convert our height information that we're gonna make. That's all added to this blend and give us those shadows. And I'm just gonna take our final blend and also connect it to the height. I'm just gonna right click on this blend that we made, add a comment, and so call this final blend, just to keep things organized. So if we take a look at some reference that I've made, here's some of that suede leather material that I was talking about. If we zoom out, it looks like this is a bit more fuzzy. You see there's some streaks of leather and whatever it's made out of. But the closer you zoom in, you'll notice that instead of it being a lot of streaks of thin fabric or thread, it's more like grains, more like something a bit more hard than you might anticipate. So to replicate that, we're gonna use a couple of noises. So the first noise that I'm gonna get is when it's spacebar and bring in a dirt one noise. So if we look at this in the 2D view, you can see we've got these specks and they're not exactly hard or fully opaque. You've got some transparency here, a bit of a soft border around all of these specks. And I think that's gonna replicate what we're going for pretty well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this to the final blend. See what we got here in our 3D view. Let's give some more room. And what I'm gonna do is double click on the dirt one and change the scale parameter. So we can scale this up to add more detail. It's kind of scaling it down as we bring this value upwards. So I think two should be enough detail for what we're going for. Now I'm noticing that we wanna make some changes to how this height information is being interpreted. So I'm gonna to go to the normal conversion node that's connected to the normal node, and I'm gonna play with our intensity a little bit. So if I bring down the intensity of our normals, you can see it gets more smooth. And if I bring it up, we're getting a lot more fine grain detail. And I think that's what we wanna go for. So I think I wanna increase this quite a bit. And you notice if I drag it all the way to the right, we're stopping at three, but we can actually increase this intensity parameter even higher. So let's choose something like four. And so now we're starting to get that effect a little bit just by increasing that normal value. Now I'm also noticing that the roughness here is a bit too shiny, if that makes sense. So if we go to our roughness here and we see our uniform color that's driving this value, I can bring up the value and make it less shiny. So the whiter the color or higher the input value, the less shiny this is gonna be. And if I bring this down closer to black, we're gonna get some shiny leather here. So I think somewhere around 175 on this float value scale is gonna look good. And I can hit control shift and right click and move the light around. That's looking pretty good. So up next, what I think I wanna do is bring in another dirt noise to blend in with my dirt one. So let's hit spacebar and bring in a dirt two. Dirt two is gonna add bigger flakes to the mix, but it also has a lot of these dark gaps in between. So 
I'm gonna bring in a blend node, spacebar, blend. And what I wanna do is I wanna take my dirt one and put it into the background of this blend and dirt two, put it on the foreground. So I'm gonna change my blending mode to multiply. And you'll notice if I double click on the blend and look at our 2D view here, if I change this opacity, we can see that the higher the opacity, the darker this gets. And that's because we're multiplying these values. So you can put this dirt two and dirt one in either the foreground or background, because when we do a multiply operation, it doesn't matter. But either way, if we increase or multiply those darker values onto our lighter values, we're going to remove a bit of this detailing that we have from our dirt one. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about by putting this into the foreground of our final blend. Double click on this new blend that we've made and bring up the opacity. And we're starting to thin out our suede leather a little bit while also adding on some of these bigger flakes and patches. So maybe something like 0.45 is good. It's thinning it out a little bit, but I think we still have a little bit too much detail still. So I'm going to go to our ambient occlusion node that we added at the beginning. And this is connected to our ambient occlusion output. And I'm going to change this height depth parameter. So if I take down the height depth, you can start to see that only the larger patches and larger flakes are getting that shadow. And now we can start to see some of those patches as if the leather has worn away or it's facing a different direction and sort of faking that specular light effect that happens. So we've got our two noises blended together, but now I wanna add some finer detail and fill in some of the gaps here. So with that, I'm gonna bring in another noise by hitting spacebar and bringing in a fractal sum base node. This is an incredibly handy node because it has a bunch of parameters that do a lot of things that the other noises do, but all built in to one node. So let's take a look at what some of these parameters do. You can see that we've got a min and max level. So if I bring up the min level, you can see we're getting a lot of extra fine detail here. If I bring this down, it's gonna soften things out. The max level is gonna take away all of that high detail and just leave the soft, mushy noise detail. The roughness fades between the high frequency detail and the low frequency detail. And then you have this global opacity slider, which darkens and lightens the overall noise. So I think what I'm gonna do is keep the min level at one and the max level at 12. So we get that high frequency detail. I'm gonna bring up the opacity just a little bit to see what we're doing. And let's fade between this roughness a little bit. I think I wanna add more fine detail to fill in the gaps. So maybe something like 1.26. And then I'm gonna bring down the global opacity pretty low because I wanna fill in the gaps of this noise. It's already pretty dark. So when we blend this height information together, it should say relatively in the same histogram range. So let's blend these together. I'm gonna to select the connection between our blend over here and the final blend. Select it, spacebar, bring in a new blend. That's automatically going to put the previous blend into the background. So let's get this fractal sum base and put it into the foreground. And I'm going to double click on our new blend and change the blending mode to add. Because I want to add on this detail and fill in those gaps. So if I zoom in here and bring up this opacity, you can start to see that the small details are getting filled in. Here's without, and here's with. So maybe something along the lines of, let's go with 0.8, and that should fill things out pretty well. And this is pretty much our material. So if you'd like to make some adjustments, 
what you can do is go to the ambient occlusion conversion node. And if you want to add some more detail, you can bring up that height depth. And you can see now that we're getting a much more intense, maybe a thicker leather, or you can really thin it down. Also, if you want less of these patches, we can blend in another noise. So what I can do is I can duplicate this dirt one. I can right click duplicate, or I can hit control D. And then after this blend here, let's bring in another blend. And let's take that dirt one, put it into the foreground. And then what I can do is change the blending mode to max lighten. And then because this is the same noise as the previous dirt one, you're not going to see any change. But what I can do is change the random seed of this noise, and it's going to fill in some of those gaps a little more. So I can also change the scale down to one or even a higher scale, or you can keep things consistent with two. And then we can go in and change our opacity of our new blend a little bit. And now you have less of those gaps. If I click on this blend and hit Shift D to disable it, you can see the difference, just toggling it with Shift D. One last thing is if you want to add some color, you can go to the uniform color that's been provided. So maybe I want to make this a light yellow, like our example maybe shift the hue towards something a little more orange. And we've got something similar to that reference image that I had. Or maybe we can do something more tan. And now you have that more dark brown look. And here's our final graph. We've got some noises blended together. We also have a fractal sum base, which kind of ties everything together by adding that extra layer of noise. And then into our final blend, which goes to our outputs. And that's it. With just a couple of nodes and a tweak of the settings, we've got a pretty convincing suede leather. Go ahead and change the random seed of the graph to get some variation on where those patches are or what kind of noises you're getting by double clicking on an empty space in the graph and dragging that random seed slider. We just crossed an awesome milestone for this channel, 5,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for watching my videos and tutorials. It means so much and it's great to know that a lot of you out there want to make textures and materials. This is just the beginning. We've got a lot of cool videos coming up, especially a pretty interesting one coming up very soon with an exciting announcement from me. With all the exciting announcements coming from Adobe and Substance, now is the best time to dive into Substance Designer. So if you'd like to see more videos and tutorials, hit subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post my new announcement video and also more texture making tutorials. And if you like this particular video and it helped you out, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you're watching and that you'd like to see more videos like these. That's it for now. I'm Jeremy Siner. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.